Good day, folks. Um, my name is Tom Wilson. I'm your host today for the uh, Victoria County webinar series. This is the fourth in a series of uh, webinars to assist tourism operators to help plan and prepare for the upcoming 2012 season. So now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our presenter for today's webinar. Her name is Amy McKinnon. She is currently the social media manager for Celtic Heart of North America, and she's the director of Bay St. Lawrence Community Center. She's been recognized as a leader in the social media field and enjoys, uh, greatly enjoys engaging with people and pushing out new content. She keeps current with the latest trends by attending national and regional conferences and sharing information in her own network. She previously worked as a social media consultant with Destination Cape Breton, a project manager with Victoria County Social Media Project, and an administrator with the Top of the on Online Marketing and Social Media Project. She has presented at several regional workshops and conferences on the social media and is part of the organizing team of the annual Cape Breton Online Marketing and Social Media Conference. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Amy McKinnon. Good morning, everyone. Um, first, I'd like to say welcome and thank you for your time. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Tom Wilson for, for providing me with the opportunity to speak with you today. And of course, the ladies from Victoria County Capsulate Association, Donna and Annette, who you can see up in the panelists, who have been more than patient with me these past couple of days getting ready for this seminar. So today's webinar, basically what we're going to look at are tips and tools for building, managing, engaging, and monitoring online presence on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And we're going to take a look at some different online photo sharing sites. Um, I do bring with you today several years of experience and early adoption of using social media in the workforce, in the workplace, but I claim to be no expert. I believe nobody can actually. Um, what I can say is I've been lucky to have great mentors, friends, and learning opportunities over the years that will hopefully answer your questions that you may have today. And at the end of the webinar, if the all else fails, I will take your information and answer any questions that I don't have the answers to. Um, the presentation I'm going to do today is most of us, although we may not have a presence on Facebook as a business, we have a presence on Facebook at least as a person. Um, before you can have a presence as a business, you have to have that person to make or create the account. So I apologize for those who don't already have a business account or uh, a fan page is what they used to be called set up already, and if you have any questions on how to do that, um, put them towards the end and I will answer them. So what I'm doing with this section of the slide is assuming you already have a fan page set up and may or may not be engaged in that fan page. Um, people ask all the time, why do I have to be on Facebook? Well, simply there's 845 million active users on Facebook today. Um, Facebook is free. So it gives your business a chance to get out there and engage with potential customers and past customers and promote yourself as the place to go. You can boost the growth of your business through the use of Facebook. Um, if you look at areas that promote, were early adapters, like the top of the island, who did a social media campaign over three years ago, we were one of the first. We've seen stats go as high as 20% higher previously. And when surveyed and asked where they found us, it was through social media and the web, not traditional advertising. What you get with a fan page is two-thirds of a screen that is dedicated to your business and your business alone. If you were to go onto Facebook and um, 
go to anybody's fan page, what primarily, primarily you'll see is only information about that particular brand or company. The most important thing about Facebook is persistence. Unless you keep engaging your fans on a regular basis and continue to post interesting comments, you are going to find it difficult to attract new people and thus attract new business. I control about four fan pages altogether. Um, most of the time I will reference back um, South Celtic Heart of North America. For instance, um, I, like I said, I profess to be no expert, but on average we're gaining anywhere from 15 to 20 people a day as of late on our Facebook page. And I've often said I'm not doing a whole lot different than anybody else. But the one thing I can say that I'm doing is I'm engaging and posting regularly and I'm there. And that is what's making the difference in our fan base growing. And when our fan base grows, you can also look at the conversation and people are talking about coming here that weren't necessarily coming before. And that's exactly what we want. Facebook is time consuming for a person if they don't manage it correctly. Um, you have to watch that you don't spend too much time on any one of these outlets because they all deserve some of your time. But you ha what you have to do is you have to make sure that if somebody does take the time to post on a photo you had put up or a comment that you had put up, reply. You have the ability, just like they do, is to, they can like your comment, well you have the ability to take two seconds and like their comment. By doing that, you're acknowledging them. The other thing I monitor are, are troubadours, the ones that I see liking the comments a lot. For instance, um, right off the top of my head, there's a lady from out west, she's living in the Yukon, her name is Allison, she was originally from Cape Breton Island, and regardless what I post, she has a lovely comment or she'll like my post. I single-handedly at times single her out in a post and say, thank you Allison for being there for us, or Lynn or Victoria. So. It's not wrong to single out your troubadours, and I think that's what brings um, them back out and to promote us more. So that's very important to give yourself not only the time to post on your Facebook, but also the time to thank those who are posting and engaging with them. A rule of thumb um, is every time you eat, which is typically three times a day, you're supposed to post three times a day. Um, the other thing, content. You don't always have to push out your own content. You can link to articles, you can link to other photos, you can link to events that are not necessarily happening at your facility, but around your facility. The other thing is if you have a good website behind you, it makes social media that much easier. I've done social media for organizations that have not had very good websites at the time and I've ha had the opportunity to do just the opposite, have organizations that have great websites. And the difference between trying to engage people from the ones that don't have the good websites and do is like night and day. So you still need that basement. Don't, don't give up on your website and think that social media will be the end all to end all. I think what social media can do is not only create the conversation right there in front of you, but it can also drive these people to your website that will create even more business for you. As much as you want to post content as a Facebook user personally and a content manager, Nothing can drive a person to dislike your branding more is posting too much and posting only the same thing. 
it's really hard um, sometimes to find content for your facility. But if you're constantly posting about articles or constantly posting about only one thing like festivals and events or constantly posting about your place, you're not going to have engagement. You have to think bigger than just the article or bigger than just the festival and event. You have to talk about other people in your community. And that's going to bring to you an engaged listener who's going to talk about not only you but others. And you, it takes more than just your business to get somebody to the area. Um, I see, I know Liz is on there. If Liz only talks to the, I think it's Liz anyway, talked about her business and not about what's happening in or around the deck, there'd be no reason for me to go because I could go to a bed and breakfast anywhere or I could go to a hotel anywhere. So when you're thinking about making content, think about pulling in, you know, the stuff around you as well. So make your content relevant. Make it diverse. Make it timely. And make it interesting. And you will engage your community. Think about posting at least once a day. I think um, if you're super active, it would be three times a day. Unless something very special happened, I wouldn't post much more than that because you don't want people to dislike you because they're getting too much information. And when the time comes and somebody comments on what you wrote, remember to thank them. Remember to comment back or even take a second and like their comments. And you'll grow because it works. So we all worry about anal analytics. Analytics are what gives us a snapshot of whether or not what we're doing is actually working. And there are tons and tons of tools to measure whether or not what you're doing on the internet is working. Google Analytics, um, Hootsuite, Facebook Insights, but we have to pick at least one of these sources and say, this is what I'm going to monitor to see if the time that I'm spending on Facebook is worth it. Am I engaging people? So the two that I use personally, and I know there's more out there, are Facebook Insights, which is free, and Hootsuite reports, which depending on the number of accounts you have, Facebook pages you have, and Twitter accounts, that's also free. Why pay for something when you don't have to? <laughs> so when you look at Facebook Insights, it's going to tell you how many people like your page. It's going to tell you how many people disliked your page. And what that does for me is when I see dislikes unlikes coming up in the page, I'll click on it and see the date that it happened. Then I'll go back to the day that it happened on my wall and say, what was here or wasn't here that might have caused somebody to unlike the page? Um, it'll also give you a great indication what causes people to comment more on your page. So if I notice that we're having a really busy day, like this day was wow, crazy numbers there, as you can see, I would go back and say, what is it that day that caused that? And when you look at your insights, it will tell you 48 people commented this day on this particular thing. And it will rate the top, at least top 10 or 12. What I find um, that people are most interested in commenting on, in my case anyway, is whenever I put a video up or I put a photo up, my Facebook goes crazy. Um, more than anything else, photos and links to photos and links to videos is when Facebook really lights up for Celtic Heart of North America. Um, 
events engage people. And then general information, we talk a little, engage a little bit about that, but it's definitely of the four, it's on the end. Uh, the photos and the videos are what people enjoy the most. So to monitor that and make sure I'm choosing what's working right. So let's say, for instance, I think that um, putting up news releases about the Glenora distillery would be priority and clearly what people want to see more than anything else. And I do a whole bunch of posts on that, um, different newspaper clips or magazine clips. And then I can go back into my insights and I quickly find out that things have dropped. And then I can look at, well, they drop when I link magazines, but they don't drop when I link the Cape Breton Post, or they don't drop when I put a video up of the Glenora Distillery with the, with the link. So then what that does, that will teach you what or is or isn't working for your Facebook page, because everybody's different. So that's a little bit about monitoring your presence online. So it's important, you have to know what your community is interested in, and if it's working or not working. And if it is working, keep doing it. If it's not working, fix it. So next we go on to Twitter. Twitter is like Facebook. Um, it's, it's a microblog, is what people say. You, it's about what you are doing. That's what Twitter's about. It's about what you're doing right now. And it's about what you're doing right now in 140 characters or less. Characters even count for those who aren't on Twitter. A period, a comma, it all counts as a character. Um, not unlike Facebook, there's a feed. And to the left of the feed, you will see um, a profile picture. And you can upload a profile picture of yourself or your business, that instantly identifies you. It's very important. The other thing Twitter allows you to do is change the background. The background can be adapted to whatever you want. If you go into Destination Cape Breton, they have a unique background. If you go into the community centers, they have a unique background. If I were to do one for your business, or if I were you and you were doing one for your business, you should do a unique background. It's, they're not hard, and it's all under the settings tab. So the question is, you have a Twitter account. Your Facebook account will grow as a result of your own personal account and your friends adding you. So the question is, how do I grow a Twitter account? Not unlike Facebook, it can be done by searching your current friends as an option when you first sign up to your email account. So if you give out regular newsletters or you have a database that you deliver to, Twitter can link that and say, I've just created a Twitter page, please add me. They can actually find which of your friends are on Twitter. So there's other ways of adding there's many ways of adding more people to your Twitter account. And um, you can actually pay now for some of these search engines to search out um, and automatically add and welcome people to your Twitter, Twitter account. But what you have to do is be very careful on which search um, program you pick. Because some of them just pick everybody and all of a sudden you'll have 10,000 followers. Well, if 10,000 followers and not one of them are, are interested in what you're doing, it doesn't matter. So what I've done is I've put up two of the searches that I think are one personally a little bit better than just the generic ones, that you can narrow down the type of people that you're looking for travelers and age groups and different things. So one is called Just Tweet It and the other one is called Tweets. 
So what happens is both of them have search bars and drop down menus. And after you set up your Twitter account, you can go to either one of these websites, put in what type of followers you would like to see on your Twitter account, select it, narrow it down, and then they will search out people that are like-minded to you. And then what you do at that time is begin adding those people. Um, when There's a rule of thumb with Twitter that when somebody takes the time to follow you, you take the time to follow them back. And also, it's a rule of thumb. When somebody follows you, you should, if you have the time, thank them for their follow. Be especially aware of people who may follow you that have large groups, large, a large following themselves, because when you respond to their follow, that shows up in their news feed on Twitter. And their followers see that as well. So what you're doing by thanking someone who, who may have, for instance, um, somebody followed the other day with 140, uh, a musician followed the other day who had 145,000 followers. I took the time to thank that musician for following us. In return for me thanking him, he then linked me in one of his posts. And I've seen our, our, our Twitter and our Facebook, I think, is also getting a little bit of this increase because of that. And what happens is most of the people that he would have linked, because he's doing the same kind of searches, would be like-minded and interested in Celtic music. So use these two, 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 two tools to find friends and like-minded people to follow on Twitter. Twitter is different than Facebook in the sense that a lot of the time you feel as though it's a listening and not a talking. And what happens is everybody is very helpful on Twitter. It's a great place um, to go and use as a learning tool. You'll get lost very quickly. Um, it's hard to stay focused sometimes on Twitter because what's on there are really good links from like-minded professional people. And somebody may put a link up, for instance, if you like photography, here's a link to a photography site that I found. And then there'll be another link inside of that link. And all of a sudden, what happens is because you're like-minded, you know you're going to like what they're giving you, and you're an hour of time gone in a bleat because of one tweet that somebody put out. So um, unlike Facebook, there's a tremendous amount of links. Um, it's not boring. Uh, people spread, if they find a link that they think others can be helped by, they post it. So it's very personal and uh, it's very short burps. So basically Twitter's all about like building a relationship but not so much self-promotion uh, self that there would have been necessarily on your branding page on Facebook. It's a little less of this um, come visit my facility or visit the area or come only to my business. So Twitter is a little bit more sharing than, than Facebook, would, Facebook would be. Um, Twitter. You also want to monitor how you're doing on Twitter because if you're not reaching people, then you're wasting your time. Um, it's not important to have a million followers like Ashton Kusher or Oprah Winfrey. It's important to have a little bunch of like-minded followers that will get your message out there. Um, there's two ways of monitoring um, what's going on in Twitter in your life. And uh, the two tools that I use, once again, three tools, are Clout. 
and it's K-L-O-U-T.com. And what that will tell you is who you're influencing, who's influencing you, and how what's your overall score compared to other people like you. And you can see to the left there, that's what the score and the results will look like. And not unlike Facebook, when you use Hootsuite, it will also generate you a report on how you're doing in Twitter. And you can see that to the right of the clout form there. Um, basic steps to build an online presence in YouTube. Um, the first thing you have to do is build your own channel for your own business. And then you can link that channel on your Facebook, you can link that channel on your website, and you can certainly promote it on your Twitter. All of these online tools that are free are very, very easy, and they make it easy because they want people to use it. So for YouTube, for instance, you go basically to www.youtube.com. You hit create an account. It's right on the top of the page. You fill out your information. Very easy to set up your own channel. You fill out your information, then you submit it, you confirm an email, and then all you do is sign in. Now, if you have a Gmail account, it's as easy as signing in with your Gmail account. What I can tell from the poll is that people understand it's important to have video and photo, but not the fact that you have to change those photos and change those videos on a fairly regular basis. Um, by changing your photos and your videos, whether it be on Facebook or your website, it's going to drive your website track, you know, the Google to pick up your website easier. If you have the same video, you'll slowly see yourself, you know, maybe not being picked up so quickly. Google and YouTube, you know, are now tied in together. So Google picks up video when they're searching. If somebody searched Cape North, for instance, and one of the bed and breakfasts had just released uh, another video, Cape North video. Um, now that YouTube searches out, YouTube, Google searches out YouTube videos, the likelihood of that business showing up higher on the Google standings it is higher. But yet, if you didn't change a video, or you didn't change a picture, or you didn't update any links in a long time, that's going to drop. So you have to keep those things current. Um, what people forget about is they're used to engaging people on Facebook. They're used to engaging people on Twitter. But you also have to realize you have to engage people on YouTube. People comment on videos. People can inbox you directly. And they expect an answer. You also have to monitor um, such things as likes and dislikes when you post a video. And you have to make sure that the comments are appropriate, right? Basically, start talking with whoever's commenting on your video. Now, the other thing you can do under your account is start commenting on other people's videos. And what they will then be do when it comes up, it will come up that it's your account. And people will then hopefully click back to your account and you'll get a higher viewing on yours. Not unlike Facebook, YouTube has insights. It will tell you all the nice stuff about how many views, how many subscribes, what are your most popular videos. And that's how you monitor what are interesting what's interesting your particular um, community. This is a snapshot of the Celtic Heart one. So the next thing is photo sharing. There are so many photo sharing programs on the internet, um, too many to mention. 
there are a tremendous amount of free ones. Um, there's new ones popping up every day. Clearly, as it stands right now, the most popular one, of course, is Flickr. Flickr allows you to share your photos online and link that. Both Flickr pick, uh, can link to your Facebook and Pinterest. Um, so what happens is you upload a photo to your Flickr and it gets uploaded to your Flickr that's linked to your Facebook and your Facebook page you'll see a new picture uploaded. So Flickr is the most common photo sharing program on the internet right now and it is free and it is very to set, easy to set up and all you do is you do it through a Yahoo email account. Pixar is also a very good photo sharing tool and that's Google's version of Flickr. There's Photo Bucket, and of course we can share photos between, through Facebook. And the most popular one that I use when I do Twitter photos is TwitPic. Now the new game in town is Pinterest. Pinterest is photo sharing not only of your own photos, but others and basically making collages of what is important to you. So where would I start if I didn't have a photo sharing program right now for the business? It would be Flickr. It's simple to sign up to, no different than YouTube or Facebook, a username and a password. And then it's step by step after that. Like I said, Flickr is the most uh, one of the most popular photo sharing sites on the web. It is the one most commonly orientated photo share, sharing sites available. If community is what you're looking for, Flickr is one of the top choices. Now the new kid on the block, this is why I put this down here because this is showing up in mainstream news and I'm sure people are hearing about it. It's a pin interest and everybody says it's different. Basically, it's the fastest growing social media site there's ever been. It's 10 million monthly users. It's amazing. Um, what happens is users find images, they group them together, and then they make themes, whether it be travel, Cape Breton, Cabot Trail, Sydney, Nova Scotia, and then other people like it and pin their own to it. Um, it's all about what people like. Uh, it's another platform for people to express their dreams and their style. Um, the problem with it is if at this stage of the game, as a business, what you have to realize about this particular sharing site, because we all jump on the new. Sometimes that's not the best thing to do because this particular site requires content and it requires a unbelievable amount of content and lots uh, of compelling content. And if you're not providing it that uh, or can't provide that, I would not at this point consider doing it. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a database full of content, whether it be pictures or video, perhaps then I would. But this here particular type of sharing as it stands in its newest stage will take a lot of content to be effective. Um, you, if you decide to do it, you can link Pinterest to your Facebook page. You can link Flickr, like I said, as well. Um, as far as monitoring how they're working, your analytics from Hootsuite will do that. Google or Facebook Insights will show you what the community is talking about and whether or not they're engaging in your photos. Um, one of the things is photos have to be changed or uploaded on a regular basis. 
because what I find, people return regularly to learn what's new and have you updated your photos. What I have been doing with photos and videos, something new probably within the last year, um, for instance, I think most of you would have seen the video of the Highland Village in Gaelic with Joanne and um, taped about a, two years ago. And when it first came out, of course, it was sitting, you know, a little bit of viral around um, the area and probably Nova Scotia. And then it died down. So it's a very, very good quality video. And what I'll do is, although I posted it a year ago, I will post it again on my Facebook site to get the interest back. So a lot, what I see a lot of people doing now is on Sundays going through their analytics and just updating their Facebook and Twitter accounts with information throughout the week that people would have found interesting almost a review of the best of the best of the week. And that's that's a new approach. And not that I do that with everything, but I find now there are a couple of posts that I will reshare or videos I will reshare just because the interest was there and people enjoyed it prior. Next we're going to look at the strategy. And I strategies are more about the approach rather than all the tools. Like I said, there are a million tools out there to monitor how things are going online. Um, but unless you have the strategy to deal with those tools, things aren't going to work. Um, you have to identify ways to monitor, manage, and evaluate your online presence. You must be able to, what the strategy, strategy will do is allow you to be able to manage the what if. What if I'm hacked? What if somebody misunderstands something I put up on my message boards and spreads it? Or what happens if someone leaves a negative comment? And I can't say the hacking had, has happened, but everything else probably, anybody who's engaged in social media, the latter of the two, misunderstanding your message and negative comments, have happened to everybody. If you consider social media TripAdvisor, social media Facebook, social media YouTube, social media Twitter, social media Flickr. I'm sure it's happened to most of us. You have to have a plan in place to deal with that. But in the same breath, do not develop a strategy that instantly suppresses and put, puts p people or employees in the position not to say anything because that can happen as well. As much as a strategy, you want the strategy to help to deal with issues, you don't want that strategy to make people too nervous to say anything or your employees too nervous to say anything. Um, there's many benefits of a social media policy. Right off the bat, expectations. And I have had contracts that have no, I've done contracts with no social media policy, and I've done contracts that have had social media policies, and they're like night and day. They're the employee avenue to say, I know what's expected of me, and I will do it. And it makes things easier for everybody. It also gives everybody a reference point to look back at. Um, it also protects your brand. Um, the policies that I've seen, you know, clearly right in the policy put, you will not be derogatory or misrepresenting. So, you know, there's a legal thing there and there's a brand liability. And you want to make sure that everybody is covered. And then it also makes it clear why you want to do, you know, social media in the first place. You want to keep it short, make it easy to implement, focus on the do's, like I said, not the don'ts. Don't make it too legal, legal. You know, these social media is, you know, groundbreaking, grassroots type of engagement, so you don't need um, 
anymore in your social media policy. Um, you should include consequences or a discipline if, you know, don't be extremely negative, but you have to acknowledge the fact if something does go wrong, we have to deal with it in this way. Make sure you have who to contact with questions and make sure the staff is responsible for their posts that they post about your brand. They are representing you, not them. To the left, um, you'll see in blue, right there, if, if you were to copy that down, that is a link to a step-to-step -step guide for a social media strategy. And it's an excellent one. Any questions? Amy, I do have one here from John Simpson. Rightly or wrongly, I think of Twitter, Twitter more for cell phone uh, texting. Although I have a Twitter account, I rarely access it on my computer. Am I wrong on this? No, we access it mobily. We access the thing with mobile now, John, is whether I'm on Facebook or whether I'm on Twitter, I'm doing 90% of my work from my iPhone. So. When I'm not 90% of my work on my iPhone, I'm 10% on my computer. So both of these types of platforms are made mobile and made for the computer. I think the difference maybe why you're thinking texting is because of the short 140 characters. Um, it's, it, it's not 140 characters because it's only texting. It, that that's the limit, and uh, I wouldn't say it's more of an iPhone, uh, you know, a smartphone compared to a computer thing. I think that people use both, and uh, I think they use them both for different reasons, and uh, they're two different tools, and one is more conversational, like Facebook, you can put more than 140 characters in, and more to the point, Twitter. I hope that helps, does it? John just commented in the chat, we don't have mobile connectivity in Marguerite, so that won't work. Um, you don't, but the smartphones, John, if somebody has a smartphone on them and they visit your business and you have wireless, they can use their phone wirelessly um, because it's available there. They don't necessarily actually need cell phone coverage. Uh, Amy, it's Tom here. Mm -hmm. um, realizing that many of the small business uh, operators out there um, are very uh, hardworking individuals who probably work anywhere from 12 to 16 hours a day. If you had a, um, what would you recommend to the operator if if they only had time to do one? Uh, one of the face one of the social media tools what would you recommend facebook twitter flickr youtube which one would you recommend over the other ones um tom if i only had to do one and i don't normally like to do this i would do facebook because facebook has the ability to tweet out take an app right give you the option to put the same message that you're putting out on Facebook out on Twitter in right. case that you have a group of a community on Twitter that may be different than your community on Facebook. So normally that's not something you would do often. Uh, you'd want to do if you had the time not to. You'd have two separate accounts. But at least if you create the Facebook and you create a Twitter, just like if you create a Flickr, that can all be fed through Facebook. Okay. Like if you update a new Flickr, you'd see it on Facebook. If you post on Facebook, you could have that sent automatically to Twitter. So you really are only doing one if that's the way you want to do it. But you're actually updating two sites at the same time and possibly reaching mm -hmm. two audiences. Does that help? Yes. Um one of the comments that you mentioned earlier was the importance of uh, of photos and videos on Facebook, and and um, 
I've used them for a number of uh, uh, different organizations, and I certainly agree with you. You get your most uh, Facebook uh, attention and attraction and engagement um, when you put up a new photo or a new video. That is that is what I see anyway, Tom. There are times um, the dry the drier information may do that, um, but for the most part, if when if you can get a nice picture, a nice link, showing a picture or a video, that's when you get primarily more engagement. I think it comes a point in time too in your face. I think we're hitting that now with Celtic Heart uh, that. It's coming to a point in time where we've got a really good group of well-engaged people that are conversing with each other and leaving sometimes me out of the conversation. But I actually have to jump in and say, hi there, I'm here. Um, and I think as your Facebook grows, that will happen. But initially, I think it has to build on you know that whole you engaging them. And eventually, you'll see the turnaround. And as you know, it's been pretty exciting to see that turn around. It is, yes. Um, Annette, is there any more questions out there? I'm not seeing any on my end. Okay. Well, on behalf of the municipality of Victoria County, I would like to uh, thank Amy McKinnon for her presentation today. Uh, this presentation will be recorded and you'll get a link to it in case you want to go back and receive and get any more information or check on different things that Amy talked about. Um, we have two more uh, webinars uh, coming up in March. Um, we have one on March the 8th and it's by Terry Smith from ICON and Terry's going to talk about web presence for your business. It's more than just a website and then our final one is on March 29th with uh, Dan Coffin, Director of Marketing for Destination Cape Breton, um, Cape Breton Association, and he's going to talk about the different programs and partnerships that um, tourism operators can take advantage of in this 2012 season. So on behalf of the county, again, I'd like to thank you, and uh, we will leave this session um, with a little survey that will pop up once you leave the, the webinar. It only takes a few seconds and it's, it's important for us to get that information so that we know what you like and what you don't like for the next, next series. So on behalf of the county, on behalf of the VC CAPS Association, our technical support people, and Amy McKinnon, we'd like to thank you for joining us today and hope that we'll see you on March the 8th. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>